Hi there, my name is Amanda Brooks. I am a practicing physician assistant and have been practicing clinical emergency medicine for 19 years. Um, sadly, while in the emergency department, I don't have time to talk to patients often about alternative health and root causes of disease, which is why I'm coming to you now to help all of you bridge that gap between modern and alternative medicine. So the topic today is hydrabnitis serperativa. Uh, this is a condition that I have seen several times over the last 20 years that is debilitating to patients. In modern medicine, we're treating this with like a topical clindamycin, oral antibiotics like doxycycline, and even referring patients to surgeons for excision. And, and none of these modalities are particularly helpful. So patients that I've seen, they're suffering from severe depression. Uh, they're experiencing daily pain, pussing from lesions, and they just don't know what to do. So I'm hopeful if you have HS or you know someone who does that you will share this video with them. So hopefully they can start to get their lives back. So today's video guys, it's going to look at the underlying root cause of hydradenitis superativa, and I'm going to give you six, six <laughs> ways in which you can prevent the progression of the disease uh, and even reverse it altogether. So here we go. Um, HS, guys, it's typically caused by um, chronic inappropriate inflammation. So it's an inflammatory condition. Uh, it's also caused by an abnormal amount of insulin in the bloodstream, so hyperinsulinemia. Okay, that does not mean that you have to be diabetic or even pre-diabetic. Uh, many have high cholesterol, but often uh, several others do not. So you're probably not going to want to hear this, but a large um, part of HS is due to our diet, so it's completely controllable, okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do, it might not be, it might be difficult, but it is absolutely going to be worth it, I promise. So let's get down to business. Let's talk about the things that you can do to, to reverse HS, okay? First, the first thing, get your pen and paper out. The first thing that you can do is to decrease carbohydrate consumption. Okay, so when we're eating carbohydrates, these turn to sugar, which increases insulin production. Okay, so if you have HS, you really need to be eating 50 grams of carbohydrates or less daily. And those carbohydrates, those should not be coming from starches or tubers, because again, those immediately turn into sugar, which then increases uh, production of insulin. So green leafy vegetables and things of that nature should be consumed instead. So that's number one, keep your carbohydrate consumption below 50 grams daily, okay? Number two, avoid all foods made with yeast and wheat. Okay, so many of us are familiar with wheat, right? Like it's a buzzword. So any kind of baked good, um, any kind of sugary, sweet, um, bread product. But yeast, Yeast is an alcohol, most notably beer. So alcohol needs to go. Yeast is also in fermented products. So anything in vinegar, kombucha. And again, these recommendations are for those of you with HS, not for the general population. Some of us, unfortunately, are just more sensitive to certain foods than others. Okay, so there was a study actually back in 2013. It was super small. It only contained 12 individuals, uh, but those 12 individuals, their inflammatory response was noted to um, wheat and uh, yeast, and 100% of them showed inflammatory response um, when consuming these products. And so their HS went away um, when they abstained from these products, which I know that the sample size of the study is extremely small, but for 100% of them, right? Like it's a no brainer. And when those in the study reintroduced these products, a flare erupted. Um, so eliminating um, wheat and yeast products. Um, sometimes uh, people are thinking that they're, they're uh, consuming 
um, fruits is a good thing. I just want a side note here. Fruits and most often dried fruit, um, these are a no-no. You guys have seen sometimes in the grocery store that little white film over grapes or even the outermost part of a cantaloupe, that's like a wild yeast. So again, we don't want to be consuming those. So being very meticulous, what's going in your mouth is going to definitely manifest itself externally. And again, HS, sometimes uh, those that aren't as educated uh, on the condition, they think that it's something wrong with like their sweat glands, their apocrine glands. It's not, like it's not a personal hygiene issue. This is not it at all. Um, but when our insulin levels are higher uh, in the blood, um, it promotes all sorts of things like uh, increases um, cell proliferation, uh, sebum production, um, again, causing clogging to these um, glands and uh, rupture of the collagen that's clogging them, um, resulting in a huge mess. And these, these lesions, guys, for those of you who have HS, sadly know that they can also get infected, which again is extremely painful. The third thing, avoiding all dairy, okay? So dairy is high in the milk, sugar, lactose, um, which again will increase blood sugar, which will then increase insulin levels. Um, and most of us, um, we're consuming commercial dairy, uh, which not only is that high in whey and casein, which are pro-inflammatory, so cause inflammation, um, these proteins, um, but also very high in hormones. So progesterone, we know specifically that this increases sebum production, so the stuff that causes clogging uh, to the glands, as well as increasing cell proliferation, um, and even contains um, IGF-1, so pulls more insulin into the blood again, and increases release of insulin. So dairy is an absolute no-no, okay? Dairy, no dairy, none. And there are so many alternatives to dairy these days, um, that shouldn't be an issue, but remembering that dairy consists of anything from a cow, which includes cheese, um, which includes ice cream, um, and it's hidden in a lot of packaged foods, especially salad dressings. So four on the list, no smoking. This is a non-negotiable. Those who are smokers, they are five times more likely to suffer from HS. So get rid of it. It's so bad for you for so many reasons, but with this condition specifically, you just, you can't be a smoker. Number five. Now this is, this, this is, there isn't a lot of research to support my number five, um, but I would strongly recommend eliminating all nightshades. Nightshades are potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, um, and then maybe slowly, once you're in remission, adding these back in if this is something that you can't live without to see how your body reacts. So again, eliminating all nightshade vegetables. And six, okay, increasing body muscle mass. Okay, so if we have more skeletal muscle mass, so through strength resistance training, so lifting weights, resistance bands, um, any kind of body weight activity like squatting, jumping, this is, this in turn, doing these things is going to increase our muscle mass, which will increase uptake of glucose into our skeletal muscle. Um, so again, it will help to decrease the amount of um, glucose uh, in our bloodstream, which will then decrease uh, insulin production, which is why we're doing a lot of these things, right? Okay. So those are the six things um, that you can start doing. And I know that so many providers don't take the time uh, to educate you on this um, and they wanna push a pill or a cream or whatnot. Um, if you do have a good functioning relationship with your PCP, you could talk to them about ordering a fasting insulin level uh, and a C peptide level. Um, if you still aren't seeing the results that you would like to be seeing with these lesions, until those levels normalize, you won't. So if those levels are still high, then you're still consuming um, too many carbohydrates. Um, your primary doctor could also look at inflammatory markers like the CRP, sed rate, homocysteine. Um, these are markers of inflammation.
Now, since you made it to the end of this video, there are a few things that I personally would recommend using symptomatically as you're on your quest to decrease this condition uh, that uh, is most likely ruining your life. Um, Protandem NRF2, it decreases inflammation. Again, I can put the link for these uh, in the description of the video below. Um, the Berry Good Elixir Company, they have a skin tonic that you could use topically. It contains aloe, chamomile, um, St. John's wort, colloidal silver, stinging nettles, and witch hazel. This might provide some symptomatic relief. Uh, doTERRA has a great essential oil. It's, uh, it's called um, Melaleuca. Um, again, using this topically could be extremely beneficial. Again, I'm not claiming to treat, prevent, or cure disease with any of these products, um, but giving your body what it needs to help it heal itself along your journey as you're changing and altering your lifestyle could prove to be extremely beneficial. Um, castor oil packs, specifically put out by the Queen of Thrones, love them. Um, your gut health, you know, taking a probiotic, um, and then even supplementing with zinc daily, which I personally love, the Berry Good Elixir Company's uh, daily vital, uh, vital minerals uh, um, tincture. So guys, I hope that you found this helpful. Um, if you have, please like this. Please share this with anyone and everyone that has HS um, because I want you to get your lives back. Um, take care, be well, and we'll be in touch soon. Bye.